Welcome to Names and Formulas for Covalent Compounds. In this lesson, we're going to look at how to name covalent or molecular compounds, and we're also going to look at how to write the formula for our molecular compound, given the name. To briefly review, covalent compounds are made up of two nonmetal elements bonded to each other, such as carbon and oxygen. We're going to look at some hypothetical examples of compounds made of carbon and oxygen, so we can see how to name these compounds. Here we have several combinations of carbon and oxygen in single molecules. We have CO, one of each, CO2, C2O, C3O4. Now we can't just name it carbon oxide like we did for ionic compounds because that's ambiguous. We don't know which of these carbon oxide applies to. So this is not the way to name covalent or molecular compounds. Instead, we actually use prefixes. So here's a table of prefixes that are used. If there's one atom, we use a prefix mono. If there's two, we use di. Three is tri, and so on and so forth. So using this table, let's see how we can name these compounds. So the first compound, CO, is carbon monoxide. The second compound, CO2, is carbon dioxide. The third compound that I made up here, C2O, would be called dicarbon monoxide. And the last compound, C3O4, I would name that tricarbon tetroxide. So now let's take a closer look at what I actually did with the naming. Carbon monoxide. There's one oxygen present, so we use a prefix mono in front of the oxide, giving us monoxide. Okay, the mono comes from this prefix over here, prefix for one. And I leave it out for the first carbon. I'm not using mono in this first name in the carbon. Let's look at the second example carbon dioxide. Now I have two oxygens in this, with this carbon, so this is carbon dioxide. The di prefix is over here, means two. So carbon with two oxygens, carbon dioxide. Now we get to these later examples and we start to name the first element differently as well. Now I have two carbons in this compound, so it becomes dicarbon, because there's two carbons, and there's only one oxygen, so this is monoxide. Again, again, using that prefix mono. In the last compound, I have three carbons and four oxygens. The prefix for three is tri. So three carbons becomes tricarbon. Tri, three carbon. And I have four oxygens, so I use a prefix for four, which is tetra. Tetra, four, four oxygens, gives me tetroxide. Okay? I sort of drop the vowel there. I drop the A off the tetra because oxygen already has a vowel in front. So it becomes tetroxide. One thing you'll have noticed doing this, and we're going to make a special note of it, is that when there is only one atom of the first element, so in these two examples, the carbon only had one atom, we do not use the mono prefix for the very first element if there's only one of them. That's the only sort of thing to remember for how to name covalent compounds. The first element, the first nonmetal that's listed, if there's only one atom, we don't use mono for that one. But if it's in the second position, so the oxygen in this case, you do go ahead and use that mono prefix to represent one. Now that we've gone over how to write the name for a given formula, it should be fairly straightforward to go in the opposite direction. So here we have a name, dinitrogen pentoxide, and we're going to figure out what the formula for this is from the name. So nitrogen tells me that I have the element nitrogen, and oxide tells me that I have the element oxygen. The other piece of information given to me is in the prefixes. So the di tells me that there are two nitrogens, so I have N2. The pent prefix in front of the oxide tells me that there are five oxygens. So that's it, that's straightforward. Here's my formula for this molecular compound, for this covalent compound, N2O5. That wraps up our lesson on naming and formula writing for covalent compounds. Make sure to write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.